Amen. On this morning, uh, we were certainly blessed on last weekend uh, by the FIRE uh, Women's Conference that gathered. And what a blessing. Many were blessed as a result of it, because of it. And we certainly blessed uh, the one that God used as an instrument to pull it together uh, so that it could be a blessing. And I, so I asked Dr. Tusi Tate if she would just share the message on this morning. Yeah. Amen. And I believe that there is a word from the Lord for all of us on today. Amen. So I want us to receive in her own way. Amen. Dr. Tusi Tate as she comes to share the word. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Mystery, 
Pause at the comma. So what's the mystery? Christ in you, the hope of glory. The hope of glory. And real quick, Luke, 20, Luke 17, 20 and 21. If you can put those together in the same slide, that would be awesome. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The hope of glory, the glory of his presence, the glory of him being real, the awesomeness of God. Let's read Luke 17. Once having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation, nor will people say, here it is, there it is, because the kingdom of God is where? Within, Within you. Everybody say, Christ the King. Christ, Christ. the hope, the hope. Of, glory of glory is in me. Is in me. His kingdom is in me. of God's kingdom being in you requires four things. And I'm going to push through this, but we can always get the CD. We can always go back and look at it. It requires us to acknowledge about four things. Christ in you, the hope of glory, this thing in you called the kingdom. The kingdom is in you. The kingdom is in me. It is in you. And, and it is this ability to bring kingdoms into your authority. There is no kingdom, everybody say this, there is no kingdom that is greater than God's kingdom. There is no kingdom that has more power than God's kingdom. And that kingdom is in me. That, that should make somebody feel good. I don't care what's going on in the nation. There is no kingdom Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, and so, how do I bring this kingdom of God that is in me into this kingdom, this nation that I live in? And and so I see the inconsistency. How do I live out God's kingdom in me? How do I do this? How do I bring the kingdom into my job? How do I bring the kingdom into my marriage, into my family? How do I manifest the kingdom in my life? First, 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 I hope you're taking notes. First, you must recognize, acknowledge, and accept and receive the kingdom. It's not deep. It's not deep. You just got to recognize. You have to acknowledge, accept it, and receive it. And I'm about to help you with something. That you are a citizen in two kingdoms. You have dual citizenship. You can, you, you know, having dual citizenship means that uh, I don't have to have, if I had dual citizenship uh, in Europe, I don't, I don't need my, uh, I need my passport, but I have a visa that lets me go to and fro. If, if it was, if, which they're not going to do, but let's say it was, uh, it was Cuba. You had dual citizenship. You can go do business there. You can go do business here. And then you get to choose where you're going to pay taxes. You get to choose. So wherever you go get the biggest tax benefit, you have dual citizenship. Somebody say, I can operate, I can operate. in this kingdom this and, produce. and produce. And I can operate I can in God's kingdom God. and produce. And, produce. and this is what... He expects of us. So first, first, we have to accept our dual citizenship. I have rights in this kingdom. I have rights in that kingdom. I have responsibility in this kingdom. I have responsibilities even in God's kingdom. That's in me. And I have rewards. And I have benefits in both kingdoms. Yeah, yeah. So I have to exercise these rights. So secondly, secondly, the next thing, you have to recognize, you have to recognize, and now, I was really trying to think, now Lord, what word that they can walk away with? There isn't. So R-A-A-R, R-A-P, no. But 
recognize, acknowledge, accept, and receive that there is a culture in both kingdoms. There's a culture in both kingdoms. And so you have to recognize that. You have to accept that. You have to acknowledge that. And you have to receive that. There is a culture. So what is a culture? A culture is a group of people that think the same way and they have certain beliefs. They have certain beliefs. They have certain customs. They have a way of thinking, a way of doing, a way of behaving, a way of working. So there is a culture in this kingdom, this nation that we live in. But we have a culture in a way that God expects for us to live. All right. And how he expects for us to think. And he expects us to yeah. produce in both kingdoms. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, good. Which kingdom? I want to just ask you, which kingdom are you operating from? If I, we took 24 hours in a day and we slept, slept six hours and that leaves 18 that are awakened. And so then you, you work eight and so that leaves, what, 10? And so of those 10 hours, which kingdom are you operating in? Which kingdom are you seeing the most produced from? So God, God is challenging us. So that was second. So first, you have to accept your dual citizenship. Everybody say, I can, if I can make it happen, because first comes the spiritual and then the natural. Do we remember the word that says that? So if I can see it in the spirit, I can expect for it to manifest Amen. in the natural. Right, right. Amen. Right. You have an expectation. You should have this expectation. And then secondly, you have to understand how both cultures work. And we have to put the supreme culture of God's kingdom over this natural earthly nation's yeah. kingdom. You just, yeah. you got to do it. You're going to look crazy. Because you're, you're not of this world. Remember that scripture? You're not of this world. You're not. And you're a peculiar people. It's going to look weird to people. Because you you have an expectation of supernatural debt cancellation from student loans that I keep saying are not of God. They are of the devil. And so you are expecting for there to be a supernatural debt cancellation. Who got student loans? Can we all just say this right now? God. God. Because what does your word say? I'm to owe nobody what? Nothing but, Nothing but love. Now it's different. I'm not, not against you if you ran up your credit cards. I get it. Okay, so, but this was your student loans, Pastor Kerry. You was trying to get an education. Amen. And so you're still paying back these things. Amen. If it's $5 a month, you're still paying back these things. <laughs> so that's second. That's second. Now, can, listen to me. Listen, I need you to hear this. The Lord wants you to understand this. No kingdom will ever match, somebody say match, yes. meet, meet, run ahead of, run ahead of outdo, outdo God's kingdom. God's kingdom. Not, not one. His kingdom was here before any other kingdom was here. He got this thing trunk tight. He know how to run a kingdom. And if we tap into him, he will tell you how to run the kingdom of your life. I know this is a hard word sometimes, but the scripture says, now I'm not talking about big G, but he says we are little gods. The only reason he says that is because God is in you. And you can operate in this kingdom in authority. That's why he says you can speak to some things. You can speak to a mountain. Come on, y'all. And tell it to move. You can speak to a mountain. Get a mountain. Get a mountain. Get a mountain. Everybody ever seen a mountain? You ever stood in front of a mountain? You ever drove between mountains? Going to Atlanta. Overwhelming. Some of those mountains in California, Colorado. Think, think. Anybody ever been to uh, Niagara Falls? Overwhelming. You can speak to that. You can speak to that and tell it to move. Get out of my way. Because the kingdom is in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. 
It's not just for the pastors. It's not just for the prophets. It's not just for those who hold this mic or the innocent. It's for all of you. It's for all of us. So, so we have this thing. We have this thing. And so we have this thing that we're going to overcome our culture. We're going to overcome our mindset. So, so when John prayed, when, when Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, men of God, when John prayed in, in John chapter 17, he had a prayer for himself, he had a prayer for the believers, and he had a prayer for the disciples. He said to the believers, and I'm just going to grab on to verse 21, he said, I am the, in them, and you and me talking about God, verse 23, I in them and you in me, he said, so that they will be brought to complete unity. He said, God, you're in me, I'm in them, he's in us, and God, you are in me, and this is solely so that they may be brought to complete unity, so that who will know? Who will know? The world. The world will know that you sent me, and I have loved them just as you have loved me. That's the sole reason for God to be in us. That's good. Good. So that people will know that God loved, Jesus loved God, and God is in us through Jesus Christ so that we can be unified. When we are not unified, we are not showing the love of God. And we are not showing the world, church, that Jesus is love. That's, that's God's other name, right? God is love. And so he said, for this reason, I live in them. If you abide in me and if you, my, you abide in me and my word abides in you, you can ask what? what anything. What, whatever you won't do, you understand you have a tape recorder in you. This is why you need to hide the word in your heart. So you can tap into that word and press replay. The person you're going to hear talk more than anybody ever is you. You. So you have to start understanding everything you need. Pastor started saying something years ago. Everything we need is in the house. I'm going to help us. Everything we need is in the house. It's in this house. It's in you. You just got to get it in you. You don't have to trip. Oh, I, don't, I only know. I, hey, you, you know three good scriptures. Just three good ones. And then you can quote them correctly. Be, be good with that. Go get some more. Get some get index cards. Put them on the refrigerator. Put them on the mirror. Put them on the dashboard of your car. Meditate upon these things. How can, how can a man, how can a young man? Fornicate, lying, stealing, homosexuality, adultery. There is a sin of not receiving the love of God. That's it. Wow. Of not living out his kingdom, not manifesting it. Not manifesting it. We pray amiss. We pray amiss. We pray amiss. Not just because we don't know scripture. We pray amiss because our motives are wrong. We're asking for the wrong thing. Because you ain't tapped into the whole of glory. Got to tap into the whole word, glory. Got to tap into the whole. See, that excites me. That excites me. I'm, I'm getting a little excited. So, he said he's made these things known. He's making this. So, as sure as the Father, hear me, because he desires this thing of unity. He desires this thing of unity. So, when you jump back over into Genesis 9, uh, as a father, I believe that, always leave last. I believe that God was a little proud of the people, Pastor Carol, who was building the tower. As a father, look at them working together. Don't y'all, you know, because Sharon got a posse, so they got a basketball team. Don't you love when they working together? you like, look at them, and they're all clean, and they roam, and they talking nice to each other. Hallelujah. They being kind. You just love it. So as a father, I believe God was proud of them. But as God he took issue. He took issue because they were trying to do something in this context of unity to get to him. That was never his intent. Because that means he could never come down here, get to us, so he could get in us. So, so he said, I got to confuse this thing. 
me, because if I don't, they nothing they do will be impossible. So that, that scripture there was, was, was Jesus praying for his disciples. But then there's, I mean, for his, for the, uh, all believers, all believers. Then you jump to, and you don't have to put this up, uh, John chapter 17, Bible verse 14, 15. Now listen, he said, um, they're in this world, but they're not of it. He talks about the challenges they're going to have, but you know what Jesus didn't say? Take them out of it. He said, he said, I'm going to go take it out of it because then we find out later that he, you know, we, we discover he's in us, so I, you, you can make it. <laughs> you can make it because I'm in you. I'm in you. You can make it through this thing. So he says, so this is why. Somebody say dominion. 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 You have dominion. Now, we lost dominion because a brother a, uh, Adam. We lost it. We did. But then we find over in Ephesians about chapter 2, uh, some other chants, where, where, where uh, it says that we are seated in heavenly places. With Christ, every spiritual gift belongs to us. And then it talks about how everything is under his feet. Well, if we sit next to him, everything's under our feet. Oh, y'all still have the meaning, y'all. We missing it because Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom is in you. You are seated in heavenly places. Anybody ever have an opportunity to sit in a box of uh, 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 sky, sky, what's it called? You know, they play skybox. Yes, yes, yes. And now, personally, I don't like them because they're too far away. I can't see. I can't see what's going on on the field or on the court. But one of the benefits of sitting uh, in those uh, personalized corporate boxes is you get all the trees. Right. <laughs> you get all the trees. You get all the pets that you want for free. Chicken, pizza, shrimp. You get all that stuff for free. So that's the benefit of sitting up high. Not only do you have opportunity of the expanse to see, oh, look at them, and you get to see the people all the way on the other side of the cross. Oh, there's a whole other opportunity when you understand you are seated in heavenly places when you watch Jesus. Quit looking down. pageants, pastor, and this is clearly about 50, 60 pounds, maybe 80 pounds ago. And I used to do pageants, and uh, I remember this one pageant. They're all behind stage. This is high school. They're all behind, and uh, we were running late. We were running late. All the girls had been coming out late, and so um, I took it upon myself to walk fast in my dress. Y'all know I ain't win nothing. They couldn't measure me. They couldn't judge me. They couldn't judge me. Because I took it upon myself to decide how I need to walk across the stage. Right? And, and thought that that was going to be acceptable. And I remember afterwards, this is what they said. I'm going to tell you, it happened another time in college. They asked me this question. I'm at Western Michigan University. Had left Wilberforce. Was at Western, and uh, they asked me the question, and they said um, they asked me a question about I don't know why they asked me this question, and then this something I still remember. But they said, "What is the challenge of interracial marriage?" Why did they ask me that? Why did they ask me that? So there's a lady sitting in front of me, and she happened to be Caucasian. Well, her daughter was in the pageant, and I got stuck. I got stuck. Just answer the question. There are rules to the kingdom. You gotta walk at God's pace. You gotta answer the question. You gotta do what God says. Kingdom is in you. Now, see, I didn't know then that God would have acted like that. At that moment, Sister Kim, if I would have said, Lord, give me something to say, because my whole thing was I didn't want to offend her. Right. her. And, and no matter what I said, it would have offended her. But I lost. We're losing the competition. We're losing the battle. We're losing the fight because we aren't doing what God said. Oh, thank you. I won Miss Congeniality. I think I sold more. And that was funny back then. But anyway, I won Miss Congeniality and I sold more tickets. But I missed the prize. Wow. I 
miss the prize. And so what God wants is for us to take dominion. Take dominion. Those contests, and this has nothing to do with conceit. When I looked at the papers, I won. I won. But I didn't take dominion. That job, that next job promotion is yours. But you won't take dominion. You won't pray for what you want. You won't ask for what you want. You know it's time for you to get an increase. You've been there for three years, five years, and keep giving you a two cent brain. They ain't doing nothing. Sit down and calculate that this is how much I need. Because most of what they're giving you has been eaten up in taxes, and you don't see it no way. You, you got to pay for daycare. Put that. He's at dominion, beloved. Because Christ, everybody said, is in me. The hope of glory. The kingdom is in me. And I have the power to manifest, produce, on this side and that side. It's available to you. It's available to you. So you have this thing that comes by the relationship. You have this thing that comes by the relationship. And you got to use the word. Because he's Said, he said, it's through the Holy Spirit. He said, it's through the Holy Spirit. And so, you're, you're not of this world. You're in it. And so, but you have the Holy Spirit. He is in you. He is in you to manifest. So, you can you can not only pray. You can take the word and put it on it. You can declare a thing. You can, you can speak a thing over a thing. You can put your hand on a thing. You can walk in a thing and just expect that when I show up. See, this is the thing about the men. When you know you have dominion, you walk in a place that everything has to line up to your spirit. Yeah. 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 To the spirit of God in you, it's confusion. You're going to show up at Thanksgiving. Everybody's like, who did they get all the dresses? Everybody's going to Y'all always eating up everything. You knew I was coming. I, 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 I'm here now. Amen. Amen. Let's just go on over to, I know you don't want Sister Patty's pie. But we can get you another nice sweet. Come on, come on, come on. You have the power because you have dominion to bring things in to order. So though we lost it in the garden, we got it back. The word says, and then uh, and he reminds us again, not only in Ephesians, but he reminds us in Hebrews chapter two. When you get a chance, go over there and look at it. He says, "What is man? What is mortal man? What is this that you're mindful of them? You made them a little lower than us." What is this? We angels, we've been up here with you before the beginning of time, and you create them. You know they're gonna sin against you. You know they're gonna deny you. You know they're gonna walk away from you. You know they're gonna ask for forgiveness. They're gonna go right back to doing it. What are they? And you put Jesus in them. You put your spirit in them. You gave them dominion. You fed the king. On the cross, he didn't just take, praise God for our sicknesses and our diseases. He took the beating for your peace. He took it for your peace. Chastised for your peace. Talked about for your peace. Spit on for your peace. Dogs for your peace. Denied for your peace. And you let everything to serve the kids to serve your peace. Spouses to serve the job, the boss, the fight.
And uh, this man in us requires that we live out kingdom. So your third one was for you to seek God and to live out the kingdom. You got to seek him and you got to live him out. And so the God in you, the man in you, in us, requires us to do that. It looks like things called laws and likes. Somebody say laws and likes. Rights and rules. Principles and parables. I'm going somewhere. We're going to be done. Powers and purposes. This is what lives in us. And so living this thing out and seeking him is what God requires. So... Jesus, certainly being the word, had a great grasp on what we would call the king's language. So, but for whatever reason, he chose to use parables and similes. Similes is when he used all the likes. Parables are these short stories he would use to make a point. So this power that is in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, righteousness, love, and peace, joy through the Holy Spirit. So... This is what it looks like. The kingdom in you is like several things, but these are the ones I like. It's this hidden treasure that is found. So it's like this hidden treasure that is found. So in you is a seeker. In you is a seeker. In you is a person that's going to ask questions. In you is this hidden treasure that is found. In you, in you, the kingdom is like a pearl of great price. Many pearls, but the kingdom that is in you, many kingdoms, but the kingdom that is in you is of great price. You are valuable. What's in you is valuable, which makes you valuable of great value. The kingdom of God in you is like yeast. Now, the beauty of this yeast thing is that it's just take any bakers, bread bakers, just takes a little bit of yeast. And that yeast gets into that dough and it kneads it and it expands it. It, it doesn't even require heat yet. Right, right, right. It just requires the atmosphere change. It requires air to hit it and it'll start to expand. You have the ability, come on Tanya, to take stuff over. Because the kingdom of God is like yeast in you. So, so. This is why unleavened in, in Old Testament, they wanted unleavened bread because there was no yeast. They didn't want you to use yeast because right. yeast represented sin. Right. So this yeast that you use that's like yeast in the kingdom can overtake that sin. Oh, y'all play, y'all play. You got to get it. It can overtake the sin in your life. The kingdom of God in you. And it's so subtle. It's, so, it's just a little bit of something. It's so subtle. It's so subtle. So, so you have all of this power and ability through this yeast that is in you. And it's working from the inside back to the sleeper cell. It's working from the inside of that dough. So that's why pastor could say, the person you see today, this is not how I'm going to look in the future. Because it's an inside job. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It's like a mustard seed, which is so amazing to me because it's such a small seed. But the Bible says it can grow into a small tree that birds can perch on and hide themselves. Your seed, the kingdom in you, is this mustard seed that people can find protection and safety under you. That's, what, that's what's in you. They can find comfort from you. They can find truth from you. They can find protection in you because you know how to keep a secret. Jesus Christ. Just something real simple. It's a mustard seed. It's a mustard seed. It's a mustard seed that has to die in order to produce. And it has to go. You have the ability to go into dark places. To go down low. But all of a sudden you sprout back up into something beautiful. They talk about Shazam. Just find some 
something, find something, and put it in. You're, there's an investor in you. Okay, so 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 it talks about the kingdom of God being a man who goes on a journey and he leaves he leaves these talents with his boys and then so uh, two of them invest and they do what they're supposed to do. The other one he says you're wicked, you didn't do anything with it. So the kingdom of God in you has expectation. Yeah. The kingdom of God and you should anticipate things. The kingdom of God with you should expect a return. That when you sow, you will get something back. When you speak and declare, something's going to be produced. This is the kingdom of God in you. So you can encourage. You can expect breakthrough. You can expect breakthrough. You don't know always when, but you can expect it. The kingdom of God is like ten virgins. So within you, you got some foolishness and you got some wisdom. Both of them exist. We just pray that wise wisdom works higher. But this is what you have to understand. That means that there's a readiness in you. Because the five that were wise, they were ready. There's a readiness in you. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on to do what God has told you to do? The kingdom of God is like a landowner. A landowner who hires people. And, and so, uh, he, and they're hard workers. There's an entrepreneur, Pastor just prayed it. There's an entrepreneur in you that have the ability to hire other people. That's the kingdom. What Pastor Carol does with the daycare and hires other people is kingdom. Because it's in her. And it's in you. Some of y'all looking at me like, do I have what? Do I, do, is some, do I have something sticking up on the top of my head? Because y'all like, what? Yeah! fish he has to throw back. Yeah. The kingdom of God is in you that you will produce so much that you're going to have to give stuff away. Right. And then pastor and I said yesterday that you're going to keep some interest in it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to give away ideas. It's going to be so much that God's going to give you. You're going to give because that's how God wants to produce yeah. kingdom yeah. in you. All of this, all of this and even more yeah. is in you. So what are you doing with it? What are you going to do with Christ in you? The hope of glory. God in you. The walker on water man. That man. The healer man. What you going to do with that man that's in you? The healer man. The deliverer man. What are you going to do with that man that's in you? Oh, what man is in you? The deliverer. The healer. The righteousness of God. The vindicator. Hallelujah. What are you going to do with that man that's in you? What are you doing?
So when I just want to read this and I'm out, Pastor. He says, um, so as I was preparing this, Holy Spirit said, I started saying, What a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. I said, Oh, that's so secular. Jesus. And I had to go look up the words. I said, Oh no, no, we don't want But they some people was on the something. This is what they said. This is what they said. They said, What a man, what a man. What a mighty good man. She said, Let me take a minute or two and give respect to the man who made a difference in my world. Yeah. Let me take a minute or two to give respect to the man who's made a difference in my world. Has God the go hope in you? Jesus Christ, the kingdom in you. Has he made a difference in your world? Somebody say what a man. Thank you. 
God who God is, is working with in an existing business or one to come that you sense God is about to birth something out of you and you stood and prayed. Now this is round two of it. If that's you, you need to run up to this altar right now. Come on up here. Run up to this altar right now. Amen. It's in me. Say it's in me. It's in me. Say the kingdom is in me. Everything I need is in me. Because the king is in me. The kingdom is in me. My God, dominion, authority, and power to speak to those things that are not in command them to be. Why? Because the king in me is speaking. Glory to God. My God, I, I, I just want you, I want you, Dr. T, just to, to lay your hand, just lay your hands on each one. Amen. The impartation, listen, the impartation of the igniting of kingdom that is within you. When you leave the place this morning, guess what? Something's going to be released in you. Some authority is going to be released in you. There's a boldness that's going to be released in you. You ain't going to wimp out this time. Why? Because I know who's in me. There's a king that's living in me. There's a kingdom that's rising up in me. There's an authority that's about to take over. Favor is on the way. Favor, 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 favor.